Welcome to getting started with the data logger. This video will provide a high level overview and basic configuration of the data logger advanced plugin. More specifically, we will walk through setting up a log group, how to add log items to the log group, provide an overview of column mappings and triggers, and finally confirming in SQL Express that the data from Kepware is being logged to a table. This video will assume that the user has installed an instance of SQL Server, ThingWorks Kepware Server, and the Data Logger Advanced plugin. We also assume that the user has some basic familiarity with SQL servers and configuring DSNs. As a note, the DSN for this video has been pre-configured for time. If you are unfamiliar with this process, please view the Getting Started with Data Logger Configuring the DSN video. Let's get started. The Data Logger Advanced plugin allows users of Kepware Server to log data into any ODBC compliant database. This could include databases such as MS Access, Oracle, or in the case of this video, SQL Express Server. In this demo, we will be utilizing the simulator driver to act as our PLC. This driver will provide us with the changing tag values that we can then log into SQL Express. The process of adding these tags to the log group will be the same regardless of what driver is being used. So now for setting up data logger. There are four main steps before you can start logging data. Configuring the log group, adding in log items, configuring the column mapping, and finally, configuring the trigger conditions. We will click on Add Log Group and examine the property editor. Here's where we can change some basic properties such as the name and update rates, but most importantly, this is where we will link Data Logger with the DSN. As stated earlier, we have pre-configured a DSN for this video, so we will add the DSN and move on to the table configuration. Note, our DSN is using Windows Authentication. If we were to use SQL authentication, we would input our credentials here. Here we have three options for data logger to write to a table in our database. Log to an existing table, create a new table every time the log group starts collecting data, or create a table once and always append to that table. We will select the third option and give the table a name, Kepware Data. This is what we will see in SQL in the later step. Note, we can write to this table in either narrow or wide format. Once the log group is configured, we move on to step two, adding in the log items. This step tells the data logger which tags to write to our database table from the items in Kepware server. We will right click in the details window and select new log items and browse to our simulator channel and select our items. The next step is configuring the column mapping. The column mappings are used to specify how the properties of the log items are mapped to the columns of the database table. The default configuration of the column mapping should be sufficient for most applications. For this demo, we will be deleting the numeric ID field. This property acts as a numeric alias for the tag. There are applications where this could be useful, but for this demo, we want the SQL table to show the name, value, quality, and timestamp of our tags only. The general tab gives us three options for the trigger type, always on, time-based, or condition-based. These conditions will determine whether the log group has the ability to log data. For this demo, we will keep this property as always on. The Logging Conditions tab gives us the ability to configure the rate at which we log items to our database, as well as adding an additional trigger condition. For this demo, we will be setting the logging condition to a static interval of 500 milliseconds. With all four steps completed, we will now enable the data logger and view the successful connection to our database. We can now view our Kepware data in our instance of SQL Server Express. Congratulations on your successful configuration of data logger.